So I recently made the claim that the biggest problem with Borderlands 3 isn't actually a problem with Borderlands 3 the game, it's Randy Pitchford, the CEO of Gearbox. Well, at this point, I feel even more comfortable with that statement because there have been some pretty incendiary claims made by David Eddings, the previous voice of Claptrap, within the Borderlands games. This isn't the first time that Randy Pitchford has been at the center of a shitstorm. Most recently, he had a bit of a meltdown after a very short article came out clarifying that when he said there are no microtransactions in Borderlands 3, it was, by every single definition out there, not true. But Randy didn't like this and operates in a fantasy land where microtransactions only means premium currency and pay to win, which is simply not true no matter how you break it down. The most likely scenario here is that Randy Pitchford was deliberately attempting to distance himself from the negative stigma the term holds without actually deviating from what the practice is. It's worth saying, however, that Borderlands 2 was not known for predatory monetization or practices. It appears like Borderlands 3 is sticking close to that model, and as a result, I'm not really nervous about its monetization, but saying that there are no microtransactions is by every definition an untrue statement, and one that was quite obviously going to be refuted by pretty much everyone who heard it, so it's a really confusing position to take. After getting called out, he threw a little temper tantrum, called it clickbait, sent a giant string of weirdly ass-kissy tweets to the editor-in-chief of Game Informer while doubling down, but it blew over pretty fast and was not that big of a deal. The thing is, Randy Pitchford has a long history of having these types of spats, and one of them just went nuclear and blew up in his face. The longtime voice of Claptrap, a beloved Borderlands character, took to Twitter on May 2nd to answer a question of whether or not he would continue to play the voice of the popular robot. David said the following, No, for the first time, I insisted on getting paid for my performance, and all of a sudden, they couldn't afford me. Now, I'm not telling them how to run their business, but maybe next time, they should put the $12 million payment from 2K in the Gearbox bank account instead. Just saying. Right off the bat, this is primed for confrontation. David insinuated that he had worked for free, and the moment he stood up for himself and demanded pay, they cut him loose. With an added hint at $12 million, which has been the subject of scrutiny, and even a lawsuit in which it is alleged Randy Pitchford himself siphoned the money away for personal gain. The suit is rather in-depth and claims that there is a process in which Gearbox employees take lower salary as a roundabout way to help pay back a giant bonus that Pitchford allocated to himself. And it's a complex read, it's very, very boring, but I will link an article that contains all of the court documents down in the description below. It was not long before Randy Pitchford responded to this claim by saying the following. There was no force. He wanted it and reveled in it. The issue today is that Mr. Eddings is bitter and disgruntled about having been terminated. He was offered two times scale. He refused. I don't want him to do it unless he wants to do it as motivation affects performance. He also said in a different thread, Mr. Eddings was paid very handsomely during his employment. After his employment, he was made a relatively generous offer to reprise the role. Unfortunately, he turned that opportunity down. Now, I will say this before continuing, there are always three different sides to a story. One side, the other side, and then the actual truth because more often than not, both sides made some shit up or exaggerated. I can't claim to know the pointed specifics of David Edding's personal contract or what did or did not transpire between him and Gearbox at this time. At least I've not been able to find publicly available information to prove anything beyond unverified claims. But the exchange is interesting to say the very least. Well, now that we've gone through all that, David Eddings went nuclear about a day ago. Normally, I don't read entire threads because they are very boring, but this one isn't, so here we go. I was fine moving on after Gearbox, but when my former boss starts mouthing off about various aspects of my employment, including how highly compensated I was and how generous he is, I feel obligated to correct the record. I had a lot of mixed feelings when asked to reprise the role of Claptrap late last year and eventually realized I was willing to put differences aside and do something cool for Borderlands fans with my friends at Gearbox. I ultimately offered to do it for free in exchange for past royalties owed, plus an apology for something I've never spoken about publicly until now. Randy physically assaulted me in the lobby of the Marriott Marquis at GDC 2017. Personally, I think Randy's been on tilt the last few years. He's not the victim he portrays himself to be. I even blocked him a couple years ago for stalking me on social media. Enough is enough. It's nice not feeling the need to spot any sleight of hand these days or wonder if the card was chosen or forced. I'm happy to be free from the half-truths and full-on deceptions, and thankful to no longer hear people referred to as muggles like a con man refers to a mark. As an aside, it seems a bit conspicuous that he chimed in on my salary, but didn't mention anything about the $12 million of revenue 
he siphoned away from the employee royalty pool. FYI, Gearbox employees are asked to take lower salaries with the promise of royalty shares. 2K says they won't give a statement regarding an ongoing lawsuit, but if the allegation is false, then it sure seems a lot easier to just deny it since that's the only reason they're mentioned. The whole thing stinks. There is a whole lot there. Before we even dive into that though, there is an important foundation to lay. Randy Pitchford has a long history of saying one thing and then another thing is true or he does something in direct contradiction to what he said. It's not just about the microtransaction line, but there is also another instance where some confusion arose surrounding a voice acting role, go figure, and Randy Pitchford claimed that the actor had turned down the role, but the actor himself, Troy Baker, then refuted that claim and says he did no such thing. Still further, you have notable figures like Jason Schreier weighing in with tweets like this, highlighting the time when Battleborn was set to go free to play and Randy Pitchford stated definitively that it was not, and then it did. It is also proven within the article that even one year in advance, when this news actually surfaced, the plan was well known, it just kept getting delayed. Randy Pitchford lies, all the time. It's been established beyond any shadow of a doubt now, and if you want to go even further, there was a situation recently with a USB drive left at the office that alleges the possession of underage pornography and other sensitive material. That's an entirely separate story, it's a complex topic, and I'm going to mostly avoid it today, but Randy Pitchford is a veritable nexus of scandal, poor decision making, and questionable statements or actions. Now back to the claims made by David Eddings. The most important line in the real bombshell here is the claim that Randy Pitchford actually assaulted him in the Marriott lobby. I have been unable to find any corroboration to this story. I tried looking, but I didn't really have high hopes if we're being totally honest. But considering it was only about two years ago, if there is weight behind this claim, it is well within the statute of limitations. Oftentimes allegations like this are made 10 or 20 years later, but in this case, the five year limitation has far from passed. So this isn't a claim that can't go anywhere and it's just sort of empty, this could actually move forward from a legal perspective. The second claim is that Randy Pitchford stalked him on social media. Less of a bombshell, but still a pretty incendiary thing to have thrown around about a well-known CEO within the industry responsible for one of the biggest games possibly ever, or at least within the next few years. The third line of note is the reference back to the $12 million lawsuit yet again, and even though this claim is nothing specifically new, it dredges up the murky situation with regards to Take Two, employee compensation, and the general atmosphere of Gearbox. David Edding has also been quite vocal about events in the past with moments like this, where he asserts that Randy Pitchford is a liar and a con man, but stops short of making allegations regarding the USB drive. David Edding was, at one point, the vice president of Gearbox and has clearly left the company in a way that is everything but amicable. This is obviously a situation of extreme animosity between these two individuals. Randy Pitchford has yet to respond in any way to the allegations made, unless it happened literally as I recorded this, but given his propensity for volatile reactions on social media in the past, it leads me to believe that he has been advised by counsel or something like that to keep his mouth shut. And it's far from confirmation, but to me that certainly underlines the potential for these allegations to be credible and true. The biggest problem with Borderlands 3 has nothing to do with the game itself. In terms of gameplay, concept, and polish, it seems like Borderlands 3 is in a perfectly fine position, but this dark cloud of misconduct, rumor, allegation, and scandal that surrounds Randy Pitchford at every turn is not good for business. Randy Pitchford is a magic enthusiast. He's been referred to as a con man. He has been responsible for one of gaming's great and memorable scandals in the form of Aliens Colonial Marines, where there was a colossal downgrade after disingenuous reveal footage. And then it also has been insinuated that he was leaking panel information and might have been the cause of those unrealistic expectations. It's this whole giant spider web of problems. And he has deflected these things and more with lies and deceit that has been disproven beyond any doubt many separate times. I can't say for certain what the outcome will be or what is true or false in this ongoing saga. Perhaps Randy Pitchford did siphon away $12 million to the detriment of his employees. Perhaps he is guilty of the possession of illegal and underage explicit material. Perhaps he did assault David Eddings in a Marriott lobby, and maybe he is exactly what so many seem to think of him and claim him to be. Or maybe all of it is just not true and he's a wonderful man who is just the victim over and over and over. And us muggles are too dumb to understand that his version of what happened is obviously the only true version. 
But that really is all there is to say about it. Sometimes I hate Twitter, sometimes I love it, but as long as major CEOs and industry professionals keep using it as their own octagon, I'll keep logging in to check what's going on. That's it though. If you want to support the channel, there are a ton of links down below. I will say this, you've already watched the entire video if you made it to this point, so that's more than enough. But if anyone wants to support even further, there are methods to do that. There's stuff like Patreon, channel memberships, merchandise, yada yada. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.